Hi, and welcome to It's Disgusting and We Ate It. Um, today we're going to be discussing a lot of different things, mostly edible insects. Ooh, lots of fun. Um, but we'll move on. This program was inspired by the book on this picture. It's called It's Disgusting and We Ate It, Food Facts from Around the World and Throughout History by James Solheim with pictures by Eric Brace. And I also used some information that you'll see in the links beside the picture of the book. Uh, on YouTube, I will put them in the doobly-doo below, and on Facebook, they'll be above my head. Um, you're welcome to click on those links and look through some of their information. Now, the book, It's Disgusting and We Ate It, has lots more information than just inf about edible bugs. There's all kinds of stuff about what people ate through history. It's a fascinating book. Unfortunately, our copy is damaged, and so it's been withdrawn. But um, we've got a new copy coming. You'll be able to check that out soon. So if you uh, want to check it out, want to read more, make sure you check our catalog soon. Okay, entomophagy is the practice of eating insects, especially by people. We don't do that much here in the United States, but people do it all around the world. Why eat insects? Two million people around the world eat insects, and not just on a dare, as we might. People have been eating insects for centuries, but over time, after we started farming crops and livestock, insects became known as pests rather than food. Scientists and sustainable food advocates are hoping to change this. Insects are environmentally responsible and nutritious food. Sustainability. Demand for animal protein is growing, but raising livestock requires a lot of land and water, both for the animals to eat and, and to grow the crops that they eat. Clearing land for livestock often requires deforestation, which destroys native plant and animal habitats. Insects are much more environmentally friendly. It takes 400 square meters of land to get one kilogram of beef, but only 30 square meters of land to get one kilogram of crickets. Crickets also use much less water. It takes 2,200 2, liters of water to get 100 grams of beef and 2,000 times less to get 100 grams of crickets. Cattle also emit huge amounts of the greenhouse gas, methane, into the air. This contributes to climate change. Insects produce much less greenhouse gas than our gassy four-legged friends. Are insects nutritious? The nutritional profile of insects depends on the species and stage of life, but in general, insects are high in good quality protein. They are also loaded with vitamins and minerals like calcium, zinc, and iron. Most insects are nutritionally similar to beef, pork, or chicken. In fact, many insects have more protein and iron. And above my head, you'll see a chart that has cricket comparisons the nutritional values of cricket versus common foods, crickets versus common foods, per 100 grams. So per 100 grams of crickets, you have 171 milligrams of calcium. When you compare that to 100 grams of milk, which only gives you 125 milligrams of calcium. Uh, crickets give you 8.7 milligrams of iron. 100 grams of spinach will only give you 2.66 milligrams of iron. And then 4.41 grams of fiber for 100 grams of crickets, and only 3 to 4 grams of fiber for green beans. The future. People around the world are investigating insects as a solution to food security. Many people in the world are food insecure, meaning that they lack consistent access to enough food for an active, healthy life. As we have learned, insects could provide a way to feed people in a more sustainable way. So, now that you've learned all of this, would you eat bugs as a snack? Above my head, you see a couple of things that are available now. There is cricket flour, which are crushed crickets. People can use that to make things like breads. They're also available just to snack on. You've got some snackable crickets there. Honey mustard, smoky barbecue, and curry flavored. All right, now we're going to talk about insects and other creatures around the world and what they might taste like. Now, this is according to some people. Other people may not think they taste like that at all.
but this is what the book it's disgusting and we ate it suggests they might taste like hoo hoo grubs from new zealand they are native to new zealand and what might they taste like hmm let's see well they say they taste like buttery chicken but they have the consistency and texture of peanut butter. Hmm, I don't know about that. Sounds pretty yummy if it tastes like chicken, but I'm not sure I'd eat it. Earthworms, we have plenty of those around, don't we? Well, they say when you dry them, they taste like beef jerky. I bet some of you would like to try earthworms, wouldn't you? Cicadas, we have plenty of cicadas around here too, depending on the time of year. Well, they say when they are properly prepared, they taste like asparagus. Yummy. Scorpions. Now, I don't think I'd ever be able to eat a scorpion. Would you be able to eat one? Well, they say if you do eat scorpions, they might taste like soft shell crab. That might be yummy. Flower beetle larva. Oh, look at those little legs. Well, they say they taste like sunflower seeds. Palm weevil larva. Doesn't he look weird? Oh, I don't know that I'd ever want to eat that either. But let's see what he might taste like. Bacon. Ah, the palm weevil larva tastes like bacon when cooked and coconut when raw. I like both of those things. Maybe I would like palm weevil larva. The honey pot ant. Well, look at those and you think about what they might taste like. They taste like honey. They eat honey and the people pinch that little back end off and they eat those and they taste like honey. Leaf cutter ants. They say when they're prepared, they taste like pistachios. Oh, hissing cockroaches. Yeah, that's another one I don't think I'd ever be able to eat. And they say they taste like chicken. Lots of things taste like chicken. <laughs> the golden silk orb weaver spider. These are all over the world, but the one that they are talking about in this picture is from Australia. And they say the golden silk orb weaver spider tastes like peanut butter. A spider that tastes like peanut butter. Wow. Alligator meat. So here's one of our non-insect animals. They say that alligator meat tastes like lobster. I might like to try alligator meat. Witchetty grubs. They're so creepy looking, but they say that they taste like scrambled eggs. So I know some of you out there would probably like to try that. Oh, another one of our non-insect, a prickly pear cactus fruit. I don't think I'd have any problem trying prickly pear cactus fruit. But they say they taste like raspberries. Yummy. Dry roasted crickets. Yum, yum. They say they taste like smoked almonds. Right. Oh, rat meat. I don't think I could ever eat rat meat. He's just too cute. But they say rat meat tastes like pork. Dulse is a type of seaweed. And they say it tastes like salted peanuts. And termites. Oh, look, they've taken over my screen. So many termites. What do they taste like when they're prepared? Carrots. I wouldn't have guessed carrots. Wow. That's cool. Oh, the creepy giant water bug. I don't think I'd be able to eat him either. <laughs> but they say he tastes like bananas. And then the Goliath bird eating spider. He's really big, really creepy, and tastes like crab. And that's it for our taste like. Now we're going to welcome Miss Jenny from our headquarters in Aiken. She was ta she taste tested some bugs that are available at Cindy's Sweet Shop in Aiken. 
You can also find these varieties easily online. She tried Larvex, the original worm snacks, and crickets. And now I will turn it over to Miss Jenny. So we have two different types of insects to try and we have four different flavors. We've got bacon and cheese crickets, we've got salt and vinegar crickets, Mexican spice larvettes, and cheddar cheese larvettes. This is what the salt and vinegar cricket looks like. And this is kind of a small little guy, and as you can see, all his little parts are there. He's got legs and eyes, and he's very crunchy, very dry. There's the larvette with a closer look. And as you can see, they only have three little legs up at the top and a long little body. And they are also dried out just like the crickets. And I'll do a little size comparison here with our salt and vinegar cricket and our larvette together. Okay, so I'm going to try them now. But I would like to note that you shouldn't just go out and pick up an insect to eat. These have been specifically harvested for human consumption, so they've been fed a very special diet, and um, I read in a book once that before they are harvested, they um, don't eat for a few days, so there's no poop in them. Okay, I'm going to try the, what is this? Mexican Spice Larvette first. That is actually not bad. It's very crunchy, but then it's very soft. Oh. Yeah, I got a little, little bit stuck back there. Okay. Now I'm going to see if flavor makes any difference. This is the cheddar cheese larvette. Kind of a little, a little hard to hold on to, shape-wise. Yeah, I like the Mexican spice better. Okay, I'm gonna wash wash those. It's more of the thought of what's in my mouth. Yeah. Okay, so this next one's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Um this is the salt and vinegar cricket. Here it goes. That tasted like a sunflower seed. I had pretty much the same texture and consistency. I just can't think about it too much. Okay, and lastly, we have the, what flavor is this? The bacon and cheese cricket. Okay. Less like a sunflower seed. Taste, yeah. The flavor definitely matters. So I would recommend the salt and vinegar crickets. Hold on a moment, please. And the Mexican spice larvettes. All right, thank you, Miss Jenny, for trying out the crickets and the larvettes for us. And we hope you all had a fun time with this program. I. Try, go out and try some insects. When, if you can find them at Cindy Sweet Shop or online, um, I would say try them. You might like them. Thank you for watching. See you soon.